Now I want to talk to you a little bit about our ProxFlow sensor capability in the neonatal 2.0 mode. Some clinicians like to have additional monitoring at the Y, and so we offer a ProxFlow sensor that can be connected to the patient Y. Now a little bit about this ProxFlow sensor. It weighs very little at 6.6 .6 grams, and it's less than one milliliter of dead space. This ProxFlow sensor is actually calibrated when the short self-test is done. So if you need to ever change the ProxFlow sensor, you don't have to redo the SST. You can just hot swap the sensor out. It's just really a plug and play. The other additional information is that there's constant purges that are going on to remove that water from the circuit line, but you can also go in and you can uh, do a manual purge, and I'll show you how that is done. If for some reason you decide to pull the ProxFlow sensor out, you can do that at any given time, and once again, under the same screen, you can turn off the ProxFlow sensor. And then lastly, with the ProxFlow sensor, we don't recommend that you actually give medications through that prox ProxFlow sensor. So let's take a little uh, peek at the ProxFlow sensor. Right now I am in a VC plus mode of ventilation. I have the leak sync software on. I'm in SIMV, VC plus. The ProxFlow sensor once again will work in any um, invasive mode of ventilation. I've just picked these for an example. And I've got a rate of 30, total volume uh, set delivered of uh, five milliliters. And as we kind of look at the information on the top, we can see that on the top you have your traditional information. But you'll note that there is a designated Y after some of the parameters now. So for example, right here, the ProxFlow measured delivered volume is 5.0 set on 5.0. So you have a nice independent measurement of the uh, inspired volume for your patient. So we'll measure the inspired volume here. Right next to that, we have a mil per kilogram comparison or a VTL, uh, really VTLY slash uh, uh, patient body weight, predicted body weight, PBW. And so it's reading 5.7 right now. And then you also have some leak values displayed as well. And here's something that's kind of unique about the Prox flow sensor, is the internal flow sensors are always still working in the background. And you as a clinician can decide how much information you want to view or not view. In this scenario, I have basically leak being displayed right here, and there is no Y after that leak. That means that the internal flow sensors are picking up that there is a leak somewhere in the circuit. And then the next one to the right of it is what's called the leak Y. And that leak Y is saying, because the prox flow is all the way up at the patient Y, it can only detect leaks that is after that or in the patient. And so in this scenario that I set up, I created a leak in the circuit, but not in the patient with my test lung. And so here is kind of an interesting way to compare leak versus leak Y. And in this scenario, it's saying that you may have a leak in your circuit and not in your patient. So if you see a disparity between these numbers that are of significant value, you might begin to consider, do I have a leak in my circuit? So the prox flow, once again, uh, will display other pieces of information, such as that percent uh, leak. Right now we have an 87% leak, and you also have the C20 slash C that we talked about um, in the neonatal portion. Now I want to go in and kind of show you some of the settings on here. If we go under the wrench, we can touch the wrench. And then we go under options, we can touch options, and you have a couple of things you can do here. Right now for prox flow, I can start a manual purge, and it'll do a manual purge. When a manual purge is done, you'll kind of see the graphics change a little bit, that's for sure. Uh, it kind of looks white on there. And so right now it's doing a manual purge. Just a second, it'll be done with that. Purges are done during exhalation so it doesn't affect the inspired volume. The other option I have is I can actually turn the ProxFlow sensor off. And so right up here, it is enabled, but I can also disable it by simply touching that and pressing accept. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on. So I'm just going to cancel out of that screen. So the ProxFlow sensor, once again, is an accessory that you can use. And uh, if there should be any problems with the ProxFlow sensor, you may get some specific alarms around that. For example, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the ProxFlow sensor just to simulate an alarm. And we got ProxFlow and operative. So once again, look in the manual for other associated alarms associated with the ProxFlow sensor. But once again, it can be a nice addition to improving the graphics displays and giving you real-time measurements at the patient Y. So the ProxFlow sensor is a nice addition to help improving the graphics as well as giving you other pieces of information that might be helpful in managing the patient. For further information, please consult the operator's manual.
Thank you.